Greetings in the name of the Most High. Here we are once again, uh, back with you, and I want to share something interesting. Um, this has to do with uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, and, and just we're going to get into what righteousness is in a minute, but here we are. Okay. So Abraham, uh, he rises up and he looks towards Sodom and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children in the household after him that they shall keep the way with the Lord and do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because the sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord, and he said, Will thou destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, if there are fifty righteous within the city, wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the, the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham said, he answered and said, well, behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure, if there shall lack five and 50 righteous, will thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, if I find there are 40 and five, I will not destroy it. And so on and so on, as you know the story. And so now we get to the point where eventually it gets down to 10. And if there's 10 righteous there, will you save it for 10? Oh, yeah. I'll, I, I'll, 10, yes. If there's only 10, and we figure in those cities there may have been, I don't know, like 100,000 or so, let's say. I'm just going to use that as a figure because uh, a historian may know better than me what what formula is but let's say it's uh, let's say it's uh, 10 out of a hundred thousand and 10 out of a hundred thousand and there may be only 50,000 there but let's say there's a hundred thousand uh, more or less let's say there's 10,000 just to make it even more uh, more toward the Lord here. So let's say there's 10,000. So 10 out of 10,000, that's like, um, what is it? That's one one thousandth, right? So if there's one out of a thousand, if there's 10,000 and there's one out of a thousand, uh, I will not destroy it. And then that was the end of the conversation. Well, it turns out, and I don't know why this thing is not giving me enough. Um, okay, I've had to turn it up. It, it just got quieter and quieter, and I, I don't really understand that because I'm, I'm having it there. Now, that should be enough. Okay, so sorry about that. We started off soft, and now it's louder because I'm doing this a different way. So let's say there's 10 out of 100,000. That's... Uh, one out of every um, 10,000, let's say, okay? So one out of every 10,000 is righteous. Now, what's the definition of righteousness? Uh, the definition of righteousness is really the definition of the overcomer that we learn about in, in the end of uh, uh, Revelation, or at the end, in the book of Revelation. The overcomer are those that do not bow down to <clears throat> the slavery of the world. The world will offer you its uh, 
goodies if you agree to become a slave. So basically, the picture of selling one's soul is becoming a slave to another one um, in exchange for access to the world, let's say. I'm just kind of summarizing it. But I mean, that's the picture of selling one's soul. It's not something you don't sign a contract. You agree to be enslaved in exchange for goods, <clears throat> in exchange for things, in exchange for supernatural power, in exchange for whatever it is that you're going to need. The most curious thing is going on here with this volume. It just seems to uh, not be cooperating. I guess, well, there's more volume, and I'm, I'm hoping that it, it, it continues. So what is the definition then of righteousness righteousness would be a person then that would not take that deal of slavery and you know there are talk show hosts and other people today that they really um speak a lot about uh you know the the, the plan to enslave humanity and it's like well humanity was already enslaved in the beginning because that was the that's the deal. In other words, to have access to get beyond the, the the guards, the gatekeepers, one must be a registered slave, um, and that that's a spiritual registration. That's a spiritual signature, and it it has to do with free will. In other words, I agree to become a slave in exchange for the things I need, including. Um, Many people like to be ruled and they want to have that structure. And, you know, this is also called conformity to the world. They want to have someone over them who's telling them what to do. It makes them feel safe. It makes them feel like they have a place. And they're trusting that the one above them that they're enslaved to is going to be, you know, since they're a form of property at this point, that they're going to take care of their property. So it's a, it's a, a mutual exchange, then that person up the ladder is also then thus enslaved to the next one up. And no one really knows how high the ladder goes. I suppose we could liken it to a pyramid and say that the ladder uh, goes to the top of the pyramid and the top of the pyramid would be the devil, right? He's the one that organized this sort of reptilian order of almost like a military order of Slaves and masters, which you could look at as command. In other words, one's a lieutenant and, and commands the sergeants. The sergeants then command, um, I mean, one is a captain uh, and, and commands the sergeants, let's say, or, or a commander and commands the sergeants. And the sergeants command the, um, the privates, right? And then the privates first class can command the private regular class. And if someone goes up in rank, then the people that... If you used to be below someone, but you go up and rank above them, then the person that you were saluting, now they must salute you first. And, <clears throat> and of course, do what, do what you order them to do. So the military is very much based as an external kind of embodiment of this slave situation that we, that we find ourselves in. It's, it's just a reflection of what's already there in the spiritual realm. And so when you're um, agreeing to be inducted into the, into the slavery, which is basically into society, then you're agreeing to follow certain rules, including um, the rule of secrecy, because this is all, this could not, the slavery couldn't thrive if people talked about it. It has to be held in secret. In other words, advancement, all kinds of things happen, and, and, and there's enforcement that goes on that's both supernatural and man-made, but it's really the people that operate within it are, possessed obviously and in that possession they do things or they order things and those things they do are at the behest of those who own them and in a sense you could say we're born dead and to become twice dead is to become one of them eventually people change over time and it's been you know we've all had stories and we've all seen people that were there and intact at one point and then eventually they just weren't there anymore and we see this with uh, people all the time I would conjecture then that this is because once you've gone to that point and you get older or your utility is not what it used to be, uh, you tend to not be there. So there's, 
you know, they can call it Alzheimer's and everything else, and those are diseases, but I mean, obviously, this idea of losing one's memory and uh, things like that, it, it's kind of external also embodiment of what happens to people. They lose their thing that makes them themselves. It's almost like losing your memory. And so they say, well, there's nobody home. And it's like, well, quite literally, there is nobody home because that that was there was given over in exchange for uh, access to the world situation. In other words, to uh, belong. So you can't really blame people. I guess if there is blame, it would be people teaching one thing, say, in church, and then doing another, which is what Jesus complained about the most. It seems that that drove him nuts more than anything else is the hypocrites of the world. So you're, you're preaching righteousness that is not being a slave to the, to the world system. And you're, you're preaching righteousness, but you yourself are, you know, have not changed since your youth. You're still a slave, and you have a pretty high ranking by that point if you're a pastor <clears throat> if they put you in charge of other people, that means you've really climbed up the ranks since your youth and you're now deserving of being given a church and it's that system that gives it to you. And it's just that simple. There really isn't much more to it than that. It's, um, and of course, you know, people want to be taken care of. They want security. Women are for it because, you know, and push the men into it and have to encourage the men to, 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 to take part in it. To, to put their hand in the game, as it were, because, um, you know, they have the greatest, uh, well, it goes back to the garden. They have the connection, it, when you're on that side of things, they have that, that direct connection to the serpent, right? And so they encourage their men to take part and, and step in and take their place and do, what, do the best they can because it means a kind of security, and, and women traditionally were homemakers, so they wanted security. They wanted a, a secure place for their children. So they would agree, and the husbands would agree, that they're going to um, play ball because they want uh, their, their kids to have a better lot than they did, let's say. So all these motivations make sense. It's not like, oh, you're just so evil, look at what you're doing, you're serving the devil. No, the, they... <laughs> People that look very conservative uh, oftentimes are serving the devil way more than, say, the rebellious rock star with all the tats and the piercings. And a lot of times that's just like a clown makeup. That's just for show. The, the rank is actually not, may not be on the same level as, say, an accountant that looks very conservative and looks very reserved. And you can't imagine him taking his mask, mask off and wiggling his tongue around and being a, being a, uh, a blood-curdling Satanist. You can't imagine that, right? But it happens. And when we see that, it traumatizes us. You see someone change, they take their mask off, and this is who I really am, <laughs> you know? And that scares kids to no end. I mean, that scares people. But that's the, and that's what's being fretted over. That's the thing people wring their hands about. And so what the churches have done is said, well, that's okay, it's just sin, so therefore... Jesus delivered us from sin, so we're saved, so it's cool. We got our insurance policy. And that ain't going to fly with God. He's going to destroy the place, if that's the attitude. You know, when you're not a slave, and the, and the need to be one, you know, again, the DNA being corrupted, we want to be slaves. It's an innate need to want to belong. We're social creatures. We want to belong. We don't want to be outcasts. We want to be part of the group. We want to be part of what's going on. We don't want to be uh, pariahs. We don't want to rock the boat. We don't want people, you know, looking at us like we're weird and having to confront us and and or mock us or or, or make us into laughing stocks or uh, call us idiots or we. Nobody wants that. So from that peer pressure, usually high school or whatever, people get with the, you know, unless you're like an elite, and then then of course it. You learn about the real slavery when you're about three. Um, children to be seen and not heard. Yes, their children are there to service the adults. I mean, that's basically the the, the sad truth of of uh, the world. I mean, that's the thing. There's a pledge to secrecy because people don't want. I mean, that's against the law, right? Pedophilia, 
And yet that's a big part of it. And then, you know, as you walk along that path of slavery, you realize that you have to keep your mouth shut about the things you'll see, just like if you're a soldier. And, and oftentimes people get killed because they've seen what other people don't want them to see. Even though they pledge to keep their mouth shut and they've been loyal, that's still not good enough. No witnesses, please. And they're stabbed in the back. And um, they have been treated disloyally. In other words, you learn that the system is not loyal. And whatever your, you know, your owner, or your, the one above you, is telling you, you have to just take it. They could be just off the wall. They could be mean. They could, be, want, they could just want to humiliate you just for their own pleasure. And the, you know, that's the deal. You've got to do, do what they say. So um, people don't like it. For that reason, and uh, as far as being moving around and how people buy and sell each other, you know, for packs of cigarettes or for for whatever, that's also going on. There's that marketplace going on, and um, that marketplace is basically uh, the slave trade. Slaves are sold at auction, and so people are bought and sold in the system, um, depending on what the other guy thinks they can get, like. Well, this person has supernatural capabilities. Or this person has uh, talent. Or this person has whatever. <clears throat> and on that basis, just like you sell horses, you buy and sell them. The other thing is, uh, the other deep, dark, awful secret is those who don't comply, of course, are relegated to the lowest positions of society or just use for target practice. Uh, it's okay, you can go ahead and urinate on them. They're just a piece of crap. So then, you know, that tends to make people feel like, well, why am I being so picked on? Why am I such a loser? And people that are sensitive, they, they can't handle it. Oftentimes they'll kill themselves or tragic things will happen to people. And because of those tragic things that happen to the innocent, and these are innocent people we're talking about who did nothing wrong to anyone, really. And then they're killed or they're, suicided or something happens um, to, to and then you find out that that's actually a sacrifice to keep society going that it comes down to you know blood right in other words the, the it comes down to death when blood is spilled there's death and there's a little death there's there's the orgasm there's the sperm spilling that out that's another life force the, the blood is a life force so sex and death how many poets have talked about sex and death but when, when we talk about sex it's really the, in, in a sense, the man hands over that life force, that, that, uh, that seed, over to the sisterhood or over to, the, uh, to Eve, I suppose, is, is really going back to, to, to what it's all about in exchange for, um, and then that is representative of one's life, right? Because that is life. That, so if, if they own those uh, testicles, let's say, they own you in a sense. Because, um, you know, you could just imagine uh, things that are offered. For example, a wife, well, she's appointed to you. And she's also beholden and she's also watching you and she's handling you. So that's kind of the way it, that, that's what leads then to um, the end of society. That's what le that and that alone is what leads to the people say, well, what about the corruption in the government and the NSA and the CIA and the, all these things, and then in the church, and in, and in uh, the military, and then the government, and then and corporations, and what about that uh, the corporate fascism? And well, all of that has to have its root somewhere, and it's rooted in this because people enter in, get possessed, and do bad things. Conscience is seared; there is no conscience, and basically doing the bidding of whoever is at the top of the pyramid. And so then that's humanity, doing the bidding, you know, conform to society and doing the bidding of that at the top of the pyramid. Now we have the collapse of society, which, uh, again, is predictable from this model. From the model, we see that society collapses due to the slavery of society. In other words, people aren't free. They're not going to fight for something they don't have. So then the society based on freedom will go into slavery overtly because the people are already slaves. They're not going to raise up their voices. They're going to go into death, and willingly so. In fact, part of the rules of this thing, if they want you to die, you die. 
they have the right to exterminate you. People go, I can't believe they want to exterminate 80% of the human race, according to the Georgia Guidestones. It's like, or 90 or whatever it is. And it's like, well, they have, if, if there's enough people that have been conformed to the system, they have the legal right to do so. They have the legal right because you're their property. We are their property as humanity. They own us by our free will choice. We could have chosen the Lord, God, Yahweh, Almighty, Jesus Christ, the one, maker of all things in heaven and earth and beyond and beyond and beyond. Most awesome, unbelievable, incomprehensible thing of all, Yahweh, right? You could choose that way, like Abraham, and, and it'd be counted for righteousness because Abraham was righteous, if you want to know what righteousness is. Abraham was also very wealthy. I don't know if people really understand that. Lots of silver, lots of gold, lots of cattle. Today, he'd be like, he'd be up there in the top, maybe one, he'd be a one percenter for sure, globally, or maybe even a, a, a half percenter. That's how wealthy he was. Um, yeah, he took off. I, that the, the movies don't really portray that wealth too often. I mean, they don't really explain um, how God blessed him. But that wealth was not gotten by being a part of the system. God gave it to him. So that's a concept people just, they just can't imagine God giving you something. God making Abraham wealthy. They just can't imagine it. They think this is the only way. You've got to cooperate with people and nobody can do it on their own. Well, Abraham did it with, with Yahweh. That simple. I mean, it's important to go back to Abraham. I think it's awfully interesting how Abraham is the one who's confronted with Sodom and Gomorrah and with Lot being in Sodom and Gomorrah um, and being so concerned for the people. Are you going to kill the wicked with the righteous? This is a really, really good... That's why if I were a global leader, a top mega Satanist, like I remember I had a friend who was a, a movie producer and he used to, um, you know, at one time, and, and he'd, he'd stay over at the house all the time and, uh, when we lived out in L.A. And, um, you know, he'd, he'd never had his own computer, so he had to use my computer. So I look on the screen. He's got the top 25 Satanists listed. Lord so-and-so, you know, Duke of such-and-such. Such, you know what I mean? A list of people that are actually Satanists. I don't even know where he got it online, but they're, they're Satanists. And they have their ranking was there. Their ranking of how much money they have, you know, for example, and what their position in society is. And they were ranked as, as literally as Satanist. And, then, and I'm like, well, how, does anyone have a proof someone's a Satanist? <laughs> I mean, how do you, but there it was, name, rank, and serial number of the top 25. And, you know, he was working with a guy whose father was in that top 25. And this guy he was working with was also was financing movies. He wanted to find out if the guy was for real. So he looked up his father and found out, oh, man, this guy's rolling in it. Or this family is rolling in it. So he, he thought, okay, the guy is on the up and up. But I remember that, that, uh, that he would go, I'd say, well, why do you look to check someone out? You look at for their satanic ranking. I never heard that before. That was the first time I, I, I started. Uh, at that time, that was about 1990, <clears throat> 1998, let's say. Not, maybe 99, I'm right around in that time period. And I was, um, I was not, I was so, at that point, I was just kind of living in denial. I, I didn't want to think any of that existed, you know, until it became front and center in my life again. And then I started remembering all my own memories. And it's like, oh, the whole thing pieced together. But I, I've been running from the devil, this whole concept, since I was, you know, a toddler, since I was traumatized at a very young age. And I just didn't want to, you know, I just wanted to believe the world was Disneyland and I didn't want to grow up at all. And, and who can blame me, right? But refusal to, to, to deal with the truth comes with consequences, ouch. And so I suppose he was like there to handle me or to, to, to kind of bring me up on. He was kind of trying to tell me to remember what's really going on. And I said, I just, and so, you know, my amnesia started clearing up. I was like, Oh my God, it's all satanic. Oh no, what are we going to do? <laughs> you know, 
And, uh, ah, well, welcome to the world. Everyone's a member. Well, if everyone is a member, then, you know, God or the hand of God destroys society, destroys the civilization, uh, nuclear war, plagues. Because this is a topic I hear, like I've heard Alex Jones talking about this, and he's figured out from reading documents um, that they plan to go to machines. Gee, there's, you know, and that they, so he's actually verified what we've been saying for a long time. Uh, and, and what science fiction writers have been saying. I mean, I'm not the only one who's been saying it. I, I've always tended to, you know, I've, I've been shown that it's all about machines. And, and, it, and it's weird because when you take time out of the equation, the machine exists already. Uh, but, but he had verified that, uh, you know, that they, that, that he said the decision has been made and uh, they're, gonna, they're, they're going to um, eradicate humans now in favor of the robots. And so now it's time for the uh, eradication process. So then, then, you know, he's very disturbed and he's saying, well, now you people need to wake up. And, um, you know, I, 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 the only thing I can say to that is, well, they, they've always had the ability, it, there's always been a need to destroy humans because who has that agenda, by the way? Right, the devil. In other words, Satan is a way of death for humans. You sign on to it, but you're signing on your own death warrant, right? And so it's the cult of death. And so Satanists would want to do what? They would want to destroy all humanity. They'd want to do what? They want to go technological and bring robots in. These are Luciferians. These are Satanists. These are, this, is where that, this is where that path leads to this technocracy that a lot of people are talking about now this scientific dictatorship that we've been, that we've, we've been kind of looking at on and off over the last few years. This, um, <clears throat> this idea of uh, the elites going off to the stars. Interestingly enough, the movie Elysium, which people are talking about, and actually it didn't get that great of reviews. Uh, the public seems to like it, though. The, so Elysium, um, and interestingly enough, the people who finance the movie for Elysium, which would be a very expensive movie, uh, themselves are creating Elysium for themselves. But the movie Elysium, they're trying to create a race war, from what I understand. I haven't seen it yet. So they're, they're trying to, to create a war uh, against um, that there's a certain elite group of white people that are in Elysium and the people of color need to have equality. So, they, and so while that movie's going on and people are all like, you know, they... Like with all communist movies, the rabble wants to get what the elite rich have, right? And overthrow them and, and have, have some of that for themselves, right? So that ties into a real basic human need to overthrow the oligarch and take over yourself. And then, of course, the whole cycle starts again with a new level of elites. Um, but they're, they're just so lost in their own lust to either make things equal, their anger, or, then, or keep what they have, or whatever it is. Whatever kind of game they're playing, this is all a game. But meanwhile, the people who are making the film are themselves um, with the program, the global elite program, to eradicate humans and create their own singularity, meaning to merge with machines and become eternal on their own dime or on the dime of the taxpayers or whatever, while taking the taxpayer money with the plan of eradicating the humans paying the tax it's just the most amazing thing. So I heard Alex Jones talking about all this stuff, and it's just always, and I don't have the patience to wait on the phone, but if I could have waited on the phone and talked to him, I, I would have just said that it's really nothing new. You know, that would be my only contribution to, yeah, well, I find that he's the only one really that's really talking about this stuff. He's not afraid to go out there and say things that would make people say, oh, you're crazy. So, and, and what he's saying is not crazy at all. It's li literally the truth that's been there for all this time. But I, I just want to say to everybody that uh, this high technology, this technocracy thing, it goes back to the book, in the book of Enoch. It goes back to genetic engineering in the Bible and Genesis. It goes back to before the Bible was written. It, it goes back to ancient societies that were here before that had advanced technology and um, it's the technology that actually does everybody in, in the end. It even gets to the point of what we would call magic, and that is technology, it gets so mind-boggling that it crosses a line and becomes 
magic. In other words, I can imagine a spaceship and then fly around in it. It becomes plastic like that, where you become your own god and your own kind of mini creator. So I imagine a spaceship, I'm going to fly over there, and then I have, imagine I have the ultimate nuclear weapon, I'm going to nuke you with it. And pretty soon there's no need for me to have a physical location, it just becomes synapses firing with those thoughts, you see? And creating an imaginary world, which then becomes, I'm an icon in my own imaginary world. And that's where it leads. That exists already right now. And that's kind of like the Matrix movies, right? Those, those beings are not conscious, but they're, they're being used to, to create imaginings. And then the people are living in the imagining, which is the Matrix. So all of this has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. The need to eradicate humans and make them icons, right? To make the humans icons rather than... And then, of course, the people who are leading the charge on this, they don't realize that, at least the, in the papers they've written, they don't seem to understand that people have souls. They just think that that's a form of energy, and once you've eradicated that being, the energy kind of dissipates into the universe, and then, you know, it's not captured. Um... Although Luciferians, when they do their sacrifices and have wars and stuff, they try to capture the, 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 the energy. They think souls are energy. And they don't really understand there's, there's more to it. But then you get more advanced, you hear about stories about aliens, which are like robots, right? Hybrid robots, that have a little box where they keep the souls in. You, you, this is a, a meme that keeps coming around and around and around again. We hear about that. Um, so they, and then those can be traded. Though, that, that becomes something of value. So, anyway, you can bracket all this by saying, these are the ones who try to play God. They use wickedness and iniquity to, they work iniquity in order to advance themselves into high technology, let's say. So they have to become kind of like Nimrod to become a mighty man of the earth, which is to bow down to the corruption. That was Nimrod's great, you know, awakening. And then he became like the uh, Nephilim. Well, and we always go back to that example. Uh, so there is something to the change people go through, even, uh, you know, that, that certain DNA is triggered when someone makes that free will decision to serve the beast, let's say, or serve the pyramid or whatever you want to call it, to serve Satan, to serve Lucifer, to serve, really, it's the machine. There is a machine there now. And that represents death because a machine is not alive. But... They're thinking, well, you see, in the realm of machines, we've done music about this too. So it's, this is something, that, a theme that we just stay, we've stayed on this for a long time. Because working it backwards from the future, the machines in the future already exist and they're already exerting their control over the past, which is us. We're in the past. We're not in real time. And that's what the Bible shows us. The end was written from the beginning and we're in that story. So if we're in that story then we're behind at actual present time. Right? Doesn't that make sense? So being behind in present time, um, something that is in present time could have influence on us, and it's not just God out there beyond who's beyond uh, the, this past time we're in. And, uh, and I believe there's certain DNA strands that have, when activated, make people change even supernaturally. And, and in other words, the story of the tree of life for me is the story of the blocking of certain genes that maybe science has not identified that when triggered, unlocked the door to eternity. And then, of course, you don't need a machine. I've even gone so far technologically as to jump into the Shekinah when invited by the Lord, knowing I would be... He just presented himself as a pool of Shekinah glory. Like, you know, just imagine like a pool, like a swimming pool filled with his glory. And just this sort of undulating mass of light. And he says, jump on in. The water's fine, basically. And, and you know, with that goes, well, you'll never be, once you're in, you're never out. That's the end of whatever life you had. Well, I was so miserable, folks. I just, and I went. And there I was, happier than I've ever been, that I can ever even imagine a feeling of fulfillment there was no body or anything. I was not conscious of having a body. I didn't need one. And he was him and I was me. And I just was, uh, I needed no change. I didn't have time and space to worry about. There was no boredom because there's no time. 
there's not a clock ticking anywhere. It's just perfect ah fulfillment. There it there it is. The perfection of perfection. And I was in it. I experienced it. I got a foretaste. And in that foretaste I realized that uh I have this vessel, a body, but the body is not the I. I am not my body. So there's no escaping. If I've done really evil on this earth, just because I go into death, am I going to get away with it? No. There is no getting away with it. That's the thing. You're not going to get away with it. Um, There's a whole other world out there. In other words, in a sense, we are... In, or the prison we have is the physical life and the time clock and the cycles that everything has, that everything's wearing down in time. My animals are getting old, I'm getting old, you're getting old, we're going to die, next generation comes in. You know, and, and this is what I want to caution people about prophetically. The so Lord's kind of laying this all on me, you know, and, and, and I keep getting this, yes, but the fat lady hasn't sung yet. But the fat, yes, they may have, they've had plans, all the plans of mice and men, they planned to destroy humanity eons ago, and they've been trying to do that all this time, and they've had technology to do it, diseases, spraying things from the sky. In fact, there was a book called The Gods of Eden by Bramley, was it? Um, or I, I forget his name now, the author. It was a pretty famous book, you know, 20 years ago. And I think it was suggested in there that planes would fly over and spray, like the, the vehicles in the air would spray to, to extinct, to cause an extinction-level event. They, they were sprayed from the sky. And I thought that was interesting because I read that in that book. That's all I remember from the book. But I, I read that not knowing anything about chemtrails at the time, at the time or the idea of spraying um, cities and having it rain down and infect the food supply and the lungs of people and the you know, to, to affect the organism to, to cause death and, or an early death, if you will, to cause disease and then death. And, you know, but when the world makes a deal with this devil, that's the bargain you make. You, you say, I agree for you to make me diseased and dead, but I just want to run around the track five minutes one time before that happens. That's the deal you literally make. You make a deal for your own and your children's uh, untimely or or painful deaths. You pave the way for destruction of your children when you agree to be a slave. That moment that you agree, you sold your children down the river and your wife and everybody else. But let's say you don't agree, then everyone jumps on you as being evil or a goody two-shoes or whatever, you know. What what do you think you are, righteous? Ah, coming right back around or topic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll just kill all the righteous. Proverbs 1. Go to the first Proverbs. The collective will lay in wait for innocent blood. They're not just looking for, you know, righteous who are indignantly righteous. They're looking for innocent people who don't know there's this thing going on. You know, naive innocence. And they love to torture that the most and then, and you know, get one of those people cornered and then, then lay on them how evil they can really be. And oftentimes drive that person to suicide. If you watch the movie Mulholland Drive, David Lynch, and I, I, it's not for kids. I mean, you know, there's, there's sex scenes and lesbianism and perversion, all kinds of stuff. It's about Hollywood. Uh, but um, I think it's one of the better films about how weird the situation is and about how the world works as a microcosm. I think Sodom and Gomorrah's story is a great microcosm. Sodom and Gomorrah, the word I got this morning was, Sodom and Gomorrah is a metaphor of the world. I, I know it's a, I could have said that, but I mean, that's what was laid on my heart today. Says, Tell them it, it's a metaphor of the world. It's, it's no different than the world is today. It's just a smaller version. But the same formula exists. In other words, if there's, you know, one in 10,000 or one in a thousand, let's say it's one in 10,000 righteous then America won't be destroyed. It's a mathematical formula. We, the, some of you are experts in anthropology history. You could tell me how big you thought Sodom and Gomorrah is. Um, most of the people that are hung up on sex, they just think it's about sodomy and anti-gay and homophobe and whatnot. It's got nothing to do with that. It's, I mean, you know, it's, it's, the, the sex 
is part of the milieu of the society. It has to do with the society, with what I'm talking about. Wicked would mean those, you know, a slave society where once you get to a certain level of righteousness gone, then pretty soon the whole society goes over to decadence. It's about decadence. I mean, is there any one of us who uh, is uh, incapable of, uh, who, who could, uh, any one of us exempt from, say, murder or perverse sex or whatever? Anyone can do any, anything. Anyone can have sex with anyone. Anyone can, can kill anyone. Anyone can do evil. You know, it's, 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 we're, don't want to focus on, on that. I, I don't know why. I think, well, the reason people want to focus on sex and race right now is to divide people and to get their way politically. But who are they? They are the ones who are purveying this slave system because they know that once they get enough, then they will be justified in destroying humans, which is really what they want to do. Why? if they're human too. They don't care about their own dead. They don't care. Because, you see, once you've gone over and you're possessed by they care about what their leader wants. And their leader is not human. The leader wants no humans. So they want no humans because they're serving their leader. This has been the plot from the very beginning, I'm telling you. From the very beginning, there's been high-tech, you know, there's been planes and helicopters and, 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 and UFOs and things flying around and, and high-tech around, just out of sight, off the, this is a movie set, so just off the movie set, just out of view, the whole time. But they can't reveal all that to you because it would be breaking the rules. And the rules are set up, nobody breaks. No one breaks Yahweh's rules. Just like angels can't just fly down here and talk to you or just lift you up out of harm's way, they will do it anonymously usually, but they're not, you're not allowed to see or cavort with that behind the veil because otherwise you wouldn't understand. You're being tested to see what you would do if none of that help was available. That's what the Lord really wants. So he can't just, you know, have them fly in and scoop you up and take you off to um, nirvana. They can't do that. Uh, it's against the rules. And even talking to beings from the other side, you can't do that either. It's because, why? It gives a sense of false hope because you won't struggle. If you know this is just a test, and you know the, if you know everything about what's going on here, this is like a little laboratory. So if you know about it, what's going on here and everything that is going on, you won't participate in, and the Lord wants participants, whether it be for righteousness, in other words, to serve him and have him be the provider, or to give into the slavery, so the devil would be the provider. E e each one will provide, and um, so it's a faith tester in a sense. You know, the, 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 what we can see and touch and feel is the slave thing. In other words, would you become you know, someone's property for if they would let you have an Academy Award and give you the talent that you might not even have, just infuse you with talent so that you could achieve that legitimately? Would you do it? Well, there's a lot of people that would. I mean, I, I'm surrounded with people that have not only would do it, they have done it. And they laugh at people that don't take that deal. They laugh and laugh and laugh, or someone that didn't get started early enough, uh, like, you know, someone that got started late in life uh, down that path. Um, they have a very low rank, so seeing someone who's, who should be have been arrived, to see them, you know, sort of, kissing the toes and, you know, bowing down and, you know, being treated horribly, uh, but taking it, you know, you, you just feel like he's saying to that, that man, you know, do you have a little dignity here, you know, you just stand up and walk out, just say, amen, I, Jesus save me, please, Lord God, I'm yours, I just break this slavery contract, I just want to walk out, and you just feel like saying, you know, don't be just groveling for crumbs here. And so much of the world has taken that same deal and they grovel for crumbs and they're, they're older and passed over by younger people and the young ones make fun of them and they have to take it because they made that deal. And part of the deal is you keep your mouth shut, the other part is you've got to take it. When they, if they want to make fun of you or humiliate you, you take it. And if you have a very high rank, 
if someone makes fun of you, you can go ahead and kill him. <laughs> you send a drone after him. <laughs> um, and then, of course, if you're really high up in the military and whatnot, and you, you, you know, or you know, really powerful in the world, and you do have the authority to kill at will, or to 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 mess with anyone you want with no consequence whatsoever, that seems to be the goal of a lot of people to get to that point of autonomy. The problem therein is that there is no autonomy at that level. They're not even who they were when they started. They are basically another kind of being, and they are simply jockeying for their own destruction and the destruction of their children, which they can't see that connection. They think they're going to save their children. They'll be exempt. They're at the top of the pyramid, but uh uh-uh. The guy at the top of the pyramid wants all dead, and he's not, and the other secret is, the Lord God will not allow them to become conscious machines. Yes, they'll be machines as like a, like a memory bank of what they were. That's possible. But they will be dead. None of them will live. And so, therefore, and see, I'm already beyond them because I, I realize the next level to this is, oh, there's no need for a machine. There's only a need for imagining. It's kind of like where the Matrix was. See what I mean? You you simply imagine it, and then you're a character in your own imagining. There's no need for physicality. There's no need for a robot. There's no need for a machine. And and there's already that reality exists out there. If I want to blow up the the the, uh, the the universe in this realm, I can do so at will. I am truly my own god, but I exist as a figment of an imagination of an imaginary scenario. So I can just imagine whatever scenario and be a character in it. There, that, that would be the ultimate highest you could go, but that's a singular, uh, not singularity, but a singular function. In other words, it's a function of an individual, not a collective. But I could imagine a collective, and I could be the ruler of the collective, and I could be, inject myself into my own story. Then I am truly God, right? I'm playing, that's the highest level. But... The difference is between that and God is that's an imaginary world that doesn't exist, just like this world in a sense doesn't exist, you know. But it's not something we can control with our imagination completely. So it's so we're not we don't have that complete sovereignty over it, right? So that the people that are doing the machines now, they're gonna wake up to the fact that there's an even better high than the machines. And there's another, there's ultra-dimensional uh, possibilities rather than just this dimension. And they can rule over, and it's no fun, they can't really do anything unless they have a body of people to rule over to enslave and make them miserable because that then makes them happy. When you see the elites, just remember, they're not happy unless they're ruling over, you know, the, the way they got there was through you know, fighting their way up out of the snake pit and, you know, beating the crap out of those above them and winning the game and winning the game and moving up like Monopoly, moving to the top. They're not about to, and by that time, their biggest pleasure is power. Like the Bilderberg Group would be a great example. It's power they want. And they can't have power without a slave population. If they kill all the humans and they're just robots, that wouldn't work for many of them because they can't enjoy themselves unless someone's getting hurt somewhere, unless human feelings are hurting. That powers their machine, if you will. That powers their civilization. Gosh, it's really, you know. So let me just jump even more forward. Okay, let me come backward to to the prophetic of this. So what does this all mean for our society now? We have the two-tiered reality. We have, uh, and again, we have, like, say, what Fox News or CNN is talking about or, or you know, any of the other a- agencies of the government or the oligarchs or Rockefeller or whoever it is, or the Nephilim or, you know, the singularity or, or the future that, that hasn't come yet, but, but uh, they, they live in the future and they're influencing the past, which we're in. Any of those and any of the above, you know, the the... There's one reality there that's being presented that's making people imagine a certain way. Then there's the reality of, say, the conspiracy theorists, which is, um, the, I guess the thing now is that um, they, the, the New World Order is coming to get you and they're going to enslave every man, woman, and child, which John F. Kennedy warned about before he was assassinated. 
And also, Eisenhower warned of it. I mean, we've been having warnings and warnings and warnings. Well, now it's kind of manifesting. The problem with their, their world, as it were, is, is that um, with, their, with their formula, is that a machine is a limitation. A robot is stupid. Artificial intelligence, no matter how much smarter than human it gets, is still stupid. Um, it can learn everything there is to learn. It still wouldn't be even to what you could call smart because the, the thinking of God, the mind of God, is not formulaic in any way, shape, or form. That could be, It's not something you can make an algorithm for. It's not something that a supercomputer could, could emulate. It's not something that a million supercomputers that are beyond anything we have now could, could figure out because they already have all that technology now anyway. What I'm leading to is the same thing I've been saying, which is just because the evidence looks like they're about to pull the trigger on their blah, 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 new world order of robots, or doesn't mean it's going to happen. They're not in control. The oligarchs don't have the power. They are just fumbling around with, with this idea of a singularity. You know, this is pedantic compared to what's really going on. The highest technology they have, let's say it's 100 years ahead of us, is pedantic compared to the reality of truth. Well, what I just told you about the Shekinah, for example. What I just told you about the, um, the real matrix of the imagining, you know, the, you know, imagining things that then are created that you enter into and become part of a story that you created or whatever. That, you know, the, that aspect of, um, that would be... Um, and then, and then, in a, in a, not in personally, how it all links together, how you know, and then how it all comes back to you in the center, how you are at once insignificant in the sense of, uh, but then you are the most significant thing because without you, none of this could work. None of the good things. And what's a good thing? The good thing is when people are beyond harm, they're beyond d sorrow and death and pain and suffering. They're beyond harm, and further to that, they're completely fulfilled completely filled with joy. They're just a flowing with love. And that would be the pinnacle of creation, something like that. Okay, so obviously these people that are that are in their Sturm and Drang kind of big dramatic, you know, we got to control the Tea Party, we got to call them terrorists, we're going to beef up Homeland Security, then we're going to come get them. This is all barbaric thinking. And this is a very base way of thinking. If this is what the Pentagon and the the, the, the shapeshifters and the power brokers and all the special interests, if this is what the, all they can think of, they're very, very, very stupid people. Very, very stupid. And stupid people do stupid things that hurt other people. They realize that this world, Earth, and this part of the universe and whatever it, it is, this, this thing we're in, is an idea, too, that could be thought of like that and unthought of. It's just like that. That's what they should be going for, for that idea that you could imagine. For example, um, the ancient Vedic idea of imagining a ship, and I don't know where I got this. I keep holding on to this idea. Imagining a spaceship and then jumping into it and then flying around and hurting your enemies. That was a story I, I had heard. And then and again, this is a story I had heard. I did not read for myself in the Vedas. You have to read Sanskrit. And, and it's a, even there's a, even other... Language, ancient Sanskrit, I suppose. So I've read some of the translations. I did study Sanskrit for a year. It's, it's uh, you know, but, but in, in, in applying it to ancient texts like the Upanishads and some of the other things that were in the Vedas. But uh, basically, it um, comes down to Atman and Brahma, Brahman are equal, so the self and the self are the same. So one aligns with God, then one can be as God and do as God. And that's like a high form of magic or whatever, and that's available to these people. Um, they also have the help of the Watchers or the Fallen Angels, and they're the ones kind of guiding this whole military-industrial complex. And again, there's no power without it referring to a human body that's being controlled. Once you eliminate that, there is no hierarchy 
if there's just machines, it's impersonal. Um, there's not any any rhyme or reason. There's n- no one there to receive it. Uh, game over. So they have essentially what they're doing is plotting their own suicide, and they want to take as much of the universe with them as possible, or whatever. These are referred to in the Bible as earth dwellers, because they can't think outside the box. This is all they can do. The reptilian consciousness is very militaristic. It only thinks about you know food, sex, you know conquer the enemy, punish the enemy, send a drone strike, get them, yeah, fight the Republicans, fight the Democrats, you know whatever. That's all they can. Th- that's as far as their mind will take them, which is really sad, because the human mind is capable of so much more in thought, of so many more ideas than that. That's like kind of a reflexive, um, base, banal. You know, it may be out of this world in terms of technology, but it's used for banal purposes, which means mundane, you know, lackluster, not exciting, just boring kind of, you know, life. In other words, if all you can think of is the obvious, yeah, let's kill humanity and then lord it over the universe's machines, yeah, uh, it just almost sounds like someone that's had too many steroids. You know what I mean? It's just somebody who only thinks with uh, their loins, obviously, and that's what happens to people, I suppose, when they get involved with uh, the devil, they become base, and they only think in terms of control. It's like, okay, we're going to round up the uh, libertarians or terrorists now. They, 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 they were really behind the Boston bombing. Okay, now we're showing you stupidity. That's MSNBC, okay? That's stupidity on steroids. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm just showing how dumb these people really are, how dumb the elites are. Or Kurzweil and his singularity. He's a dumb, he's a very stupid man. He can invent little keyboards and things you can play and put his name on it, but that's about uh, his intelligence left after he did that, as far as I'm concerned, because he hasn't thought it through. See, he, none of these people want to think it through because they're forbidden to do so. So the dumbing down begins with them, and then they think, Let's put chemicals in the, in the air and let's just slowly kill them and make them stupid so they don't see what we're doing. An idiot can see what they're doing. It's, it's all been done before. This need to go into high technology as a way to become eternal gods has been tried again and again, and there's evidence of ruined civilizations where it, it fails. Back to the Sodom and Gomorrah principle. The Lord has told me that there's enough for him not to destroy United States at this point. I'm saying, Lord, we're seeing an awful lot of people. We're seeing this homeland security, which again, which again and you see the, uh, the TSA at the airport, and, you know, they're trying to do their job, but it's, it's just, you look at them and you can see there's just no, in- there's very little intelligence, if anything, going on there. I, 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 I just don't understand. Or you hear Janet Napolitano, again, no intelligence, just a stupid woman talking. You hear Barack Obama, another stupid man talking. A guy who can't think outside the way. He can't think abstractly. He can't think uh, in terms of what's really going on. He can't, you know, the idea of philosophy must have just left him cold. He doesn't understand the, 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 the process. The one thing they do understand is that, mm, well, Americans could prosper. We've got to stop that. No, no drilling for oil. We can't do it. We can't, right? There's this thing of stopping Americans because they need to be punished for having stolen the resources. We must punish them, so we got to block all economic opportunity. In fact, destroy the economy. That'll teach them, and then fold them in with the third world, and take that, and that'll be like a revenge. And that's all, that's all like lizardine, very lizardine, very reptilian. That's, it's reaction, 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 reaction. And I just, uh, this is what they obsess themselves with all day long. They're running their models and their scenarios. If we have this war, if we have World War III, if we do this, if we do that, all based on destroying humanity to boost their own power. But destroying humanity lowers the power. Any idiot can figure that out. If the power comes from the people that enslave themselves to the system, then the power would be diminished if you get rid of the people in the system because less people, less power. Their powers derive from that. They think they can go to machine power, 
But there is no power in machines. There is no hierarchy. There is no awareness. There is no... Um, it'd be like, oh, there's going to be a competition among the rocks. Well, I like these rocks better than those rocks. Look, these rocks need to be organized. We need to go hurt those rocks so we can become kings and queens. Yeah, see, it, it just doesn't give you the, you know, the thrill of, of hurting innocent people to boost your power endlessly in a never-ending downward spiral to their own karmic deaths along with their children, and they, wanna, they hope to take everyone. A lot of these people don't care if they die. That's the other thing. They know that their children would go too. They don't care. Just so the, the evidence of mankind, the, what, what they want at a certain point is humanity gone. If they die in the process, excellent. Further to that, they're developing weapons to destroy matter. Well, they already have that, but I mean on a big scale. That's what the super collider thing is all about, I think. You know, the real ones are buried somewhere in under the earth. But what they want to do is they want to destroy him that made matter. In other words, the Lord God, Yahweh. He made matter. This is kind of a Gnostic idea that, that matter is evil. So they want to take an antimatter weapon and destroy all matter everywhere. Not just in here, but all, the, all matter that exists anywhere in any way, shape, or form. They want to destroy it with their gigantic weapon. And they would be willing to die if that could once and for all be the outcome. But again, stupid. Because why? Because in the end, if there's no one to perceive the outcome, did the outcome actually happen or did it even matter? The answer is a big fat no. It never happened and it doesn't matter. All of this importance being put on this political reality or that or this thing or that thing, all of it is just dust. It's insignificant. It's meaningless. The only thing that gives life significance is a relationship with the Almighty God. There is no, nothing else going on. This is just a movie set. Whatever they want to do, they want to take the movie set seriously, build their little toys that are going to you know, try to blow up the universe. They're, they look to me when I see the group of Bilderbergs like little five-year-olds with little boots and hats playing cowboys and Indians and stuff. It just, to me, it just looks like, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not. Well, you have it figured out, you know, I'm being a little bit arrogant here, but, but it's because I spent so much time thinking about this in my youth. And I, what I'm explaining now, I knew when I was 15. I didn't have it as crystal clear but I knew that I could imagine a world and be in it, and I could also destroy that world. I knew that this world here is pliable and nothing you see is real. I knew it. In other words, there, I, I, I would hearken you to look at the unplanned kind of mystery of, of what you think reality is when it just surprises you again and again, but the, the anomalous things that happen show you that there is no plan there is no future. There is no past. There is nothing you can predict. Even the greatest models that are used are not really predictive. Oh, another stupid thing they want to do. You know, Google, one of the stupid, Google and Facebook, two stupidest people on earth. What they want to do, no, nah, these are stupid corporate. These are dumb, dumb, dumb people. What they want to do is they want to be the mind of God. They wouldn't know God if it bit them in the you know what. They have no clue what they're even... To even say a statement like that shows an IQ of three. And yet they're the best and the brightest? You have got to be kidding me. See, if I look at Google as the best and the brightest, then I would think, you know what? Humanity really has a problem. We may die from stupidity if there isn't an intervention. But there will be an intervention because there's more than... What is it? Ten righteous? But below that, <laughs> Turned out it was just Lot and, and family, you know. Lot's wife didn't quite make it. She wasn't quite, you know, I guess she wasn't righteous. She was part of things. I mean, that's what it came down to, you know. It came down to that. And what, what was going on there? Uh, 
the humans were enslaved to one another. And in addition to whatever else, and in my way of thinking, the occult practice, the whole, you know, everyone was in bondage and everyone had to do all these perverse things if ordered to, on cue, when ordered, whenever. Slavery. So that's what we're talking about. Simon Gomorrah is just simply a formula. It's a formula for people to do the math. And you can see, I like looking at the Bible kind of more of a mathematical, scientific way, like seeing Genesis as, as a story about DNA, seeing the symbology of the tree of life and, and the tree of knowledge, et cetera, et cetera, knowledge being the occult and then life being um, DNA strands. And then start to figure out the serpent and the intertwining of the serpent and, and Eve and Adam and and how there's no way to extricate one from the serpent. You're, you're locked in with the serpent. To me, that shows a physical reality of DNA, bringing in the idea of death and uh, shame and guilt. And then people signing on to that, agreeing to become slaves, their lives essentially ending, in exchange for the world. But it's pleasurable for them to do so because they get rewards daily. You know, there's a lot of sexual stimulation, let's just say that and then what that does is a glue that's the glue that glues them to the addiction of being those slaves. So they they don't know anything else. But the Lord it's not a personal thing. It's just like if everyone goes that way there's no point to have the creation there. So he destroys the people because they're ruined. They're unable to function as what they were made. At the same time there's been a compromise that makes people susceptible to that just as much as you know, if a person tries to be righteous, you're going to have the, the hounds of hell after them, trying to pull them down to, 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 to move them to that. People become obsessed to, to get them over. The same obsession that you see today with the righteous and people laying in wait to either trap them or trick them or frame them or do whatever was but being done in Proverbs 1 and back in the day in Sodom and Gomorrah. The same exact people doing the same exact things to each other. So when these talk show hosts like Glenn Beck or Alex or any of these people get up there. And Michael Savage is another one that I've, I've, I haven't listened to Savage lately. Uh, I haven't really had time to listen to. I used to listen a lot to, uh, um, I listened to, I, I listened to Left Wing too. We listened to Ed Schultz. We were driving when we were on our road trip uh, uh, on the West Coast and Gosh, that was weird, hearing it from the other side. It was just like, wow, it's just like a right-wing show, only it's left. <laughs> you know, it was like the same kind of talk, the same rhetoric, the same trigger words. And I'm like, so Coke or Pepsi, <laughs> you know? It was just really uh, amazing. It was uh, insignificant, completely. It was just uh, masturbatory uh, nowhere, you know, it was uh, unbelievable. It was it was blowing smoke up each other's arses, uh, leading nowhere. It was it was nothing. It was a vapor. It was beyond. It was embarrassing. I hear Rush Limbaugh, and I think, my well, you know Rush. I like Rush. I really like his spirit, and I think um, yeah, he makes sense to me, but not completely. But, you know, Savage, I love Savage. He makes, I especially love these guys when they start breaking the Bible out and going through the Bible. Um, and, they, and they don't really have a clue what they're talking about, but they just, they just you know what I mean? It's sort of, sort of like uh, when I hear a bad sermon, it's like you, they, they never get the lift. You never get the spirit. You never get the thing we need to see, the food we need to live. Spiritual thing, the Bible included, it's not as a rule book that you beat someone over the head with. It's to lift us through feeding us, to feed the lambs, to not just strengthen. You, you have no ability to resist. If the devil's coming after you, there is nothing and no one who can stand up to that. You need Yahweh 100%, 100%. Um, the other thing was... Uh, You know, the saying that, you know, I know there were some people mad at me for saying that the, the Christian church was built on a lie. Well, you have to understand, <laughs> the, 
semantics. The church is the body of believers who are truly have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's, you know, through, or with God, if you like, which is Jesus. But it's, you know, you know, it's, it's a whole thing you enter into. And, and, you know, the God who created all things, you know, the word made flesh, you know, the, 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 the Papa who talks to us, you know, who, who, who gives us a strength, you know, who, who leads us, the, the, the mother who comforts us, the, the, um, the, the, the creator of our reality, the, the one who shows us that nothing is set in cement. So you, you can have hope and you can have faith because we see mountains move when they shouldn't move. So that's to strengthen us for the next time. So when we pray, we know it's going to happen. We know the dead can be raised. We know the miracles can happen. We've seen miracles. And the devil tries to take them away and goes, was that really a miracle? But you know it was. You know this reality is plastic and, and it's, it's pliable. And I mean, you can't, you know, but God can move it. And, and, and faith can move it. And it can change a, a hellish prison into a, into a, a, a heavenly abode overnight in some cases. You know, so what you see here in the plans of mice and men are meaningless to us. They scare people. Likewise, if you think that you can, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not against people, you know, storing food and different things. And, but this whole thing, you know, I, I have to say, this whole idea of storing food and then they're going to come after you to confiscate the food and put you in a retraining camp... All this is so dumb that I, I just can't get my mind around how, how I guess what they've been doing to the environment has lowered the IQs, especially of the, of the uh, social engineers. Because this idea of retraining camp, this is back out of the Cold War. This is some other, this is some kind of, I brute beast, I beat you down. You say yes when I say two fingers, even if it's three, you say two. Okay, okay, go, ooh, yeah, got it. You know, it's like, it's like dumb and dumbest. It, it's, it, they are embarrassing. All the money of, for science and research, and this is the level of game they bring, you have got to be, the only thing they can think of is to buy lots of guns because they're going to go shoot little old ladies because they're conservatives. I, are you kidding me? Is, is it that bad, folks? And, uh, well, you know, it's been that bad before where they just bulldoze bodies into graves. You know, even ones that are still alive get bulldozed and buried alive. And they think that, that they're going to get away with it. And no one gets away with anything, friends. Nobody. We cannot, um, you know, we need to help our fellow man, not hurt them. And we need to imagine more. And, and, and the Lord shows us amazing things about the, there are heights that could be climbed. There's, there's a great economy that could be uh, flowing around the world. But the people that you, America, you elected, they are in Washington to hurt you. They want to destroy you while saying they're your friend. I think of the black, white, white thing. It's no black, white thing. It's just a, it's a, it's a black thing. It's a white thing. It's a red thing. It's a race thing. This is unbelievable. You've got, I'm, I'm, I, I look at Trisha, I can't believe that people actually take this seriously. It, it, that that it's even an issue to even be discussed. It's like the gay thing. I tell my friend, he goes, well, I'm for equality. And I'm like, equality, that's that buzzword, equality. Huh? There is no equality, dude. The people that you elected are there to make it unequal. That's the whole point. They're there to destroy life. They They get power off it now, but they're not there for the future for the Latinos in America. And La Raza, they're not that. There is no La Raza in their thinking. These oligarchs uh, want to use La Raza to get something they want, and then they're going to turn around and destroy La Raza. I mean, it's it's. You, uh. you see, this disturbed my mother to no end when I would talk like this, because I could see it. You know, I could see it, and she said, you know. If, the fact that you can see all that, that means you're never going to be, you know, you, you, you're always going to be a loser. 
Why? Because I won. I figured it out. Yeah, but see, that prevents you from, from blindly going in. We need you blind and kind of stupid in order to get you in so that you know your place in life. <laughs> I mean, you're jeopardizing the whole thing. <laughs> and I suppose that goes for people that thought the earth was round and they, they paid the price. They were like you know, people getting crucified or executed for saying the sky is blue and when it's really we know it's red. And they, they, this is how dumb people are. They pass laws so that you will agree to a certain reality. Like I always wondered, well, okay, you know, we learned from um, certain, uh, was that author Gary Webb? Was that the guy that got suicided by being shot in the back of the head a, f a few times um, for exposing the CIA's drug running? Well, I thought that everyone knew about the CIA drug running. I had a friend, you know, I told you before, he's a drug dealer. He was, I mean, not now, in the 80s when everybody was. And he, he did all his business with the CIA, who was basically funding Iran-Contra, you know, back in those days. And it was, you know, um, I met another guy who was like a sharpshooter that dealt with, uh, you know, taking out drug kingpins when they get too ornery. And uh, I, I don't know. To me, it just seems like... A, of course, the power elite would deal in sl guns, slaves, drugs, and, and maybe diamonds, you know, and certainly weapons, right? I mean, weapons, you know, high-tech weapons, and science, and, and, you know, anything they could, whatever they can deal in, they will deal in. They're not subject to the laws of the United States or the laws of, of any country. These people operate above the law. The CIA doesn't follow any laws, neither does the NSA, and they never have. Why would they start now? Just because uh, there was a Snowden that came along. You know, they, they're, they're never, there has always been full surveillance. <laughs> I don't remember a time when there wasn't... Yeah, well, now we're going to get into this idea of pre-crime. And this is just another stupid ruse. Again, no IQ, no intelligence at all. It's just a, need your I don't like you, I'm going to get you. You know, it's the, uh, it's the you know, roof. You know, uh, man is animal, reactionary, um, needing to hurt the other guy. So coming up with a pretext, i.e., based on these, your behavior and all the things you've done, we figure you will, these models are a thousand percent accurate, and they predict that you're going to do something awful. So therefore, we're going to arrest you now. That's, and, and I kid you, they, they're salivating over the idea of getting that in place. The idea of pre-arresting people before they do anything. And um, the drones zap you from the sky, but they also uh, are, they have, I don't know why they haven't rolled these out, but they have satellite weapons where they can zoom in on it wherever the camera can see. It can pinpoint, take that thing out. They could, they don't need drones. They can pinpoint you and take you out of a crowd so that, you know, basically they can just start getting rid of people that are trouble and then we'll have a nice world here. This is the, the cautionary uh, science fiction we've had over the years, have been warning about this kind of thing for years. As long as I've been reading science fiction, we've had stories like uh, the warning of, against the things. The Twilight Zone would warn against uh, things like this. Um, and yet they do it anyway, even though it, that makes them look stupider than stupid because it, they don't care if they look stupid because what they want is, I want the power! You want power! It's, it's, that's, uh, that's, I'm doing that to show you a, like a dumb grunting person that has no mind. It's just belly and, and you know, loins and belly and beating the chest and all the science that's been used has been has led nowhere all the weapons they think they have are merely toys that do nothing the nukes they wanted to launch why aren't they launched because they're because God's angels um, fly in here and stop them 
because they've been told they can't do another thing right now if you regard to Egypt or whatever, or there'll be there will be no Washington D.C. That's what I, that was the word I got. I've, I have no way to prove that. That's just something that kind of came. It was a brief thing. It was like, and, and then I noticed there it looks like there's a stand down going on. So I'm like, okay, I'm just you know report it to you when I get it. You know I can't even explain how that happens. But no, nobody's feeding me anything. They could certainly check my email. I, I, I hate email. I don't even want to be on email. I just want it all done for me, like Facebook is all done for me. I just can't, I can't even imagine being there. Again, Facebook, the purpose of which is to dehumanize people, to desensitize and dehumanize them, but then we're addicted to the idea that we can f uh, fellowship with people. And we like doing that. We really do. We want to fellowship. We want to, uh, um, you know, uh, we want to have love in our lives and relationships. We want to, to, to pass the good times and the bad with others. We, want to, we, want to, we all need a hug now and again. And wouldn't that be great? But I, we're, look, we were dropped in here behind enemy lines, and that's just not available right now. The cost of those kinds of hugs can be one soul or to put you in danger. It's, it's, you, it, we just don't live in a peaceful situation here. We live in a war zone. I, there's still buildings and everything, but it's, it's, the, it's the equivalent of the worst war zone of World War I or World War II. It's, it's, it's just bodies lying, or, or the Civil War, or the Revolutionary War. There's bodies lying everywhere. This is nothing to take lightly. It, it, it's all a test to see what you will do. There is no safe place for you to go and, and bow down and, and agree to serve them and then be inducted into it and taken care of. There is no insurance out there. The person that's willing to take care of you and help to, to, to you know, move you into a better position, they're just looking out. They're just bounty hunters looking to bring in another lost soul so they can cash in. The, none of this is, it's all bad. It's all bad. The only good thing is the Lord God Almighty, that everything else is bad. And, and for me, you know what? This world that we're in, because see, I understand there could be hundreds of millions and billions of worlds, okay? And there are. And there's, there's an infinite number of them. And it does, so it makes it, it renders a moot, this whole thing. But here's where they get me. Here's where the Lord God got me. Here's where you got me, Lord. You, you put me in a place with stupid people. I ask you not, never to do that. But that's the thing. And then they call me stupid. And I suppose they're right. I am stupid, you know, in terms of uh, what the, their whole thing, whatever they're into. And I'm really, I'm retarded in that way. So to put me in a place where just mentally we're, it, it, we're so far apart that there's no way to communicate anymore. I mean, I, you know, I see them. <laughs> You know, I watch them grunt and groan and, and uh, you know, get their pleasure from hurting other people. But I, I don't see anything else. It's just like, belly, feed me. I hurt you. Me feel good. You know. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know what to do. I, you know, and then the people that were intellectual, who you could have a conversation with, they're all saying it's all about racism and stuff. They, they're, they're, they have no ability to speak anymore. They... I guess what is the fluoride in the water? Something. Then there's the leaders. Like, say you hear a Barack Obama, you know, you expect to have some intelligence, not zero intelligence, not not so stupid that you can't see, not not that bad, not that dumb. Oh, I mean, you know, he has he can have eloquent sentences, but I mean, when you add them up, they, it's not about the the the. the the delivery, it's about what is said. And the latest thing was that healthcare is a right or some kind of political game he's playing. But it's got nothing to do with anything and anyone. It's all it's, everything he says has got some political angle to it. There is no human there. 
There is no person there named Barack. I don't even know who the guy is. Do you? The same with George Bush, George W. Bush. I don't know who he was either. I still don't know who he is or what he is. I just watched it horror as, as I, you know, I, I tune into a guy like Michael Savage. He's like, yeah, he's a smart guy, but then it only goes so far. But, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, we, you know maybe we won't be having a spiritual discussion anytime soon. But, you know, and I, I hear Alex Jones is really smart. He's figured it all out, and that's that's why I like him. I like both of them. I used to not dig Alex because I was feeling that it was a lot of fear-mongering, and, you know, and at this point, it's it's changed. In other words, he's got this deep respect for God, this awe of Yahweh, you know, this thing that maybe came in because of his children or whatever. But he, I, 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 he changed so much from when I first listened to now his God-fearingness and the fact that he'll... His uh, rants and things um, are all, they all seem godly to me. You know what I mean? There's just been, you know, he's really matured. Earlier version, I was not a fan of. Later version, yes. But it's not my understanding at this point. You know, it's, it's sort of, but it's, but I'm, you know, maybe I'm just unable to have a conversation. But the thing that bothers him bothers me very much. And I want to be supportive of these uh, these filmmakers that he's that he's working with and these other people he's lifting up. I think they're really a, a great hope for uh, this country if they can just get some traction and get some audience. You know, to that end, I uh, I'm, I'm sitting here with a copy of Media Composer. <laughs> ah, the other thing is I'm mulling over now that I have uh, overhead. I I'm mulling over. You know, putting my donation button back on the page because um, I got, you know, a lot more expenses. And uh, the only thing I won't do is if, if I do that, I, I will not, um, you know, be beholden. You know, and, and the thing about taking that button off is I just didn't feel I owed anybody anything. So there is that delicate balance. But, I mean, at the same time, we, we have business things we want to do. We, we're not just going to be derelict floating around, you know. Um, my accountant was asking me, basically, you know, the, the income from the Zeff report that we had before, we, you know, is gone since you decided, you know, you didn't, you know, and I've been working it out. But if it appears again, I guess I'm just another sellout jerk. Uh, but to wit, we never made much money, but we could cover our bandwidth, which is, and then, you know, our employee, we have a bandwidth, you know, it adds up. And um, I myself am a supporter of other people's radio stations. It's when it gets mixed in with God and how God wants you to tithe or whatever, it gets all mixed up with all this other stuff. Last year, I think I donated to some political campaigns here and there where I felt it was re really needed. And then, and then I also vote with dollars for things like, um, you know, to support uh, like the movies of... Uh, that, that uh, InfoWars has and things like that. And, and they had a contest where they were, you know, we may have a contest coming up pretty soon. I'm not sure how that's going to happen, but we also are going to have a contest for uh, filmmakers. And, um, yeah, yeah, that'll be interesting. Um, we're working it out now, but it may be like one of them it will be like this. We have a contest for filmmakers, and what they're going to do is... Um, you know, we're going to have like, we're going to pick, say, pick three three songs that we've done that are under the Corova Media label. Uh, and they can pick any anyone they want, and they do music videos to them. And, you know, may the best one win, and it will have a cash prize. And I think that will definitely, and, and the, the, whoever wins, that will, should be enough to cover the budget of their of their music video. That's one. And then the other thing is I want to get involved with putting my music in documentary films and tailoring music to those films. So we, uh, so I'm willing to pay to play. So if someone needs some music, I'd be glad to pay to put, you know, pay them to place the music. But you would have to, as a filmmaker, have uh, a distribution plan and you have to be established. We can't, you know, basically someone that's never made a film before, we, we can't just say, oh, we'll, We'll, we'll hear it. We'll stake this you with this. We'll put that music in your film that you haven't done yet, 
or that you don't have experience. Well, I'm talking about people that are dedicated filmmakers we want to support. People that, and, and we're going to make films too, but people that are basically in it, right, to get information out there, to, to get it all over YouTube, to get it out there in the movie theaters, have private screenings, make DVDs, to get them around, you know, to get the truth out there about, I don't know, just pick any aspect of truth you want. How about Jesus Christ, Yahweh, God, King, the one, you know, the only way out of this mess? How about global slavery? You know, what I described today, there hasn't been a video done on it because the concepts that I put forth today are very challenging for people. Many people can't see what I'm, they know what I'm talking about, but they can't see it. They don't want to sum it up that way. They just get so mad because they feel they're so dumb to have, that they wish they could have been different, but they're not. It's been a source of anxiety and pain for them their whole life. I hear say, hey, it's the end of pain. Take Jesus. It's like, I already got Jesus. I'm in church. Well, then you haven't learned anything. You still don't have a relationship with God, so have a relationship with God. That'll do it. But then they'll kick me out of church. <laughs> exactly. Well, anyway, this is, this is the real end game. And the real problem you have here is the power has, has gone so exponential. I know the exact reason why. It all has to do with this basic slavery of society. Without that, there wouldn't be any problem. So that's what caused it all. And, you know, as, as that iniquity grows, which, and that's called the workers of iniquity, the, the, the slave trade. Without that slave trade, you would have no DHS, no, no TSA, no greedy bankers, no Wall Street pimps, no, um, none, of the, none of all the things that you complain about. You wouldn't see anything if the majority didn't go to that other. It's so ironic in the land of the free and the home of the brave that it's really the home of the slave because who hasn't taken that deal? That's the point. And the ones that have it, they get laughed at as, and 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 uh, and, uh, and uh, cast out, and you know, or made to set up and hurt, and all that blood, all that pain. The Lord responds to that, and the, what you're seeing out there is the response to what Americans have done. I don't really concern myself to really ground it as an American citizen or a citizen of anywhere. I just feel like. I'm here observing this train wreck and reporting on it, and I'm trying to find a way to have some hope and some peace while looking at something disgusting, which is that it's like the people decide to do a bad thing. So they do it, and then something bad happens to them. and go, how's that happening? I'm, we didn't do anything. We don't deserve that. It's like, no, didn't you do this, 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 and this? You deserve much worse. Same discussion I had with, well, who was it, Barbara Simpson on uh, Coast to Coast when um, we were talking about 9-11, and, and, and she just vehemently disagreed with me, saying, you know, we didn't deserve, I mean, I don't know if it's a direct disagreement, but, I mean, she just was like, we didn't deserve that. What did we do when I was talking about how we are all falling short? We all deserve far worse, you know. We were talking about spiritual level, and then she... Uh, said it about nine one one. We don't deserve that. I'm like, you you paid for that, honey. You paid. You bought it, lock, stock, and barrel. You bought it. You own it. You do deserve it. But they can't see it. So there's one radio program that can't see it. In fact, I would challenge you to find me the radio program that can see it. I, you know, I go back to the lyrics of Sympathy for the Devil with Mick Jagger. He seems to be the only one that got it. Even though I, I disagree with him on the mystery. There's no mystery about Lucifer. <laughs> He's, he wants to exalt himself above God, number one. That mystery is solved in, uh, in, in, uh, in the book of Job. And two, two, uh, to destroy humanity, the cult of death. To, to end even not just humanity, but matter and form, trees and plants and everything, everything that has material form, to end it. That's Satan. It's death. And it's the machine. That's Satan. Death, the machine. It's really simple. 
So that's, there's no mystery there. But when, when the lyrics said that, you know, who killed the czar and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, after all, it was you and me, you know, it's you and me killed. It's like, exactly. Mick got it, you know, way back then when he was a young whippersnapper, he understood the collective nature of evil and how if humanity signs on to this thing with Satan, then when bad things happen, they deserve to happen. But further, the people themselves actually did it. You know, Barbara Simpson flew the airplane into the tower. But she doesn't know it. I'm just using her as an example. I mean, it could be, it could be Zeph did it. You know, I mean, you know, uh, then there's other agreements. There's other stuff like they try to get you to serve Satan, even though you, you may be innocent, but they try to do it through, you know, um, television or through pornography or through gasoline or through buying certain clothes, you know, that here you are dirtying yourself with the things of the world that came from forced labor and, and smut and, and, and war and murder. And here you are donning it and acting like you're a goody two shoes. How dare you? You see what I mean? There's that angle of pressure as well. And, um, and they go, what are you talking about? You go, <laughs> we're going to have fun with you. And it's like, you know, that's that collectivist mentality of the bully that you get on the playground, and it never leaves. They're always out there. They're gang stalkers, right? They target an, an individual, and then they just stay on them, trying to ruin their life. And that's why I'm just like, well, you say whatever you want about me. I don't even bother defending myself. You, you know, I've been defamed and libeled and everything else and all I can say is so why uh, it's an abstraction to me it's an abstraction this life is some kind of a a bad dream or, or you know or a fulfilling dream I, I can't figure it out yet but it's it's an abstraction the, the things that happen day to day like I was telling Trish about Jack Palance having in and Frankie will remember this because we had it on the show and we said, well, he was dead a couple of years ago. And then, and then the announcement came that he was dead. And I had the same thing with Billy Joel. I, I saw an announcement where Billy Joel had died of cancer or whatever. And then two years later, here he is alive. And I see things like that and um, I realize, okay, uh, reality is just, you know, it is what it is. It's very pliable. Uh, he was dead. And no offense to, to Billy Joel, but I mean, or to Jack Palance, who was dead earlier, and then he died later. But he was dead earlier, and he was dead later. And that just shows you, you know, little anomalies that you can see here and there that show you what reality really is. It's that I was happy to see that because it was like, ah, <sighs> I can't take it so seriously. Um, going back to a society that was great, we never had that in America. We had an advantage because of free markets and limited government, and that really, any country that does that will excel. You know, I'm very much a capitalist. I, I believe that uh, that's the way to raise all boats. That's what would really take care of poverty. But the destroyers want to hurt capitalism and then call themselves capitalists and say, you see, we're doing our best, but it doesn't work. This is Obama's strategy. He, he's like, see, I've done everything to stimulate the economy, but see, see capitalism doesn't work. So we're going to have to, you know... And then all kinds of people are worrying about the 1933 thing when the, when the financial crash comes. Uh, it, w will they confiscate gold? And the answer is, oh, well, you're damn right they're going to confiscate gold and food and ammo and guns and everything else they can think of. Once they have enough weaponry in place, enough might in place, they're going to, if they do what, what history has shown us, they're going to take everything you have, including rape your children and sell them into slavery to, to China or Saudi Arabia, some far-flung place, especially if they're blonde. You're damn right. And how can we stop it, Seth? Well, that's why I've tuned in to Alex Jones, he, or Glenn Beck, or Savage. I mean, wow, Savage is really nihilistic. I don't know if, you know, you got to turn, and there's other talkers out there. There's people on YouTube. The, the, the answer is to, to be awake, to be conscious. Okay, let me ask you this. Do you want to be a slave? You're aware of the situation, right? 
you were a slave, but God delivered you out of that. And then your life changed. It got really hard in a lot of ways. Okay, do you want to go back to that? Answer, no. Okay, if enough people felt that way, we wouldn't have a problem, now would we? Do you want to be stupid? You see, what happens when you become a slave is you have to become stupid in order to get along with people. And then it sets in permanently. Those who think with their loins win the game. So then you have all these people thinking materially, not spiritually, and they make a lot of stupid mistakes. Like, I'm going to think what he could do next, and I'm going to predict what he'll do, and then I'll arrest him. Only, I, I, I could, that's so embarrassing that, Lord, if you just get the hook out and pull some of these, some of these social engineers off the, uh, the stage, they have PhDs, yet they embarrass themselves by being so dumb. Or at least, Lord, can we call it what it is? We don't like you, so we need a pretext to arrest you. I mean, you know, we want to get rid of all the bad people so only us good people exist. Isn't that just like the clubhouse when we were kids? Has nothing been learned? Has nothing been learned? Isn't that just like the clubhouse when we were kids? <sighs> I am amazed. I'm using a mic right now that I'm sorry I got a, I scratched it a little bit because when we were traveling I had my rig and I kind of tried to do a, a song. I, mean, I, I did do a song uh, called, uh, I forget the name of it now, but I did it up in Mendocino, California. We went through the Humboldt Redwood Forest and all these redwoods. I just wanted to capture that feeling of the ocean and the redwoods. It was so marvelous. I was just so loved it there. We stayed in an old 1890 hotel called the Mendocino Hotel. And it was, um, you know, we, these stairs that if you didn't hold on to the rail, you'd fall down the stairs. You know, old, you know, the, the, the stairs ascend a much steeper level back in the 1800s when this place was built. It still had the same storefront. It had a bar where the... The guy, the bartender, was like too many people and he couldn't keep track of all the drinks. And then, then this old Victorian kind of lounge. And, and upstairs, I was, you know, um, we had to take a room way upstairs, so the third floor. There's only two rooms up there. And, um, you know, we had to climb with our stuff. But I had my, uh, you know, my, uh, my gear with me. So I went ahead and came up with a song and a couple other songs that haven't come out yet that, you know, the roots of which are... Uh, I had, my keyboard had broken. I had a little um, Akai LPK, a laptop performance keyboard, 25. Marvelous little keyboard. Well, anyway, it broke. And uh, so I had to go. The only way I could actually play keys then was um, to uh, go into Reason because in Reason I usually use Pro Tools, but Reason had a a little keyboard. They make your laptop into a keyboard. So you can, with a little practice, you're playing keys, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. But anyway, um, so I was able to knock it out because I wanted to play the piano, you know, the way I play the piano. I don't, I don't want to use uh, someone else's playing or, um, you know, I wanted to be my performance and my ideas. And then I also wanted to play the bass live all the way through. And even I'm playing it on the keyboard, I'm still, it was live playing because I wanted it to be a, like a groove ad lib, you know, like it would be live. So I played all the, uh, the bass all the way through. I didn't just do like two bars or four bars, then copy and paste. I played it all the way to the very end. And, uh, then the drums were a, um, was a Rex player. So that was like a combination of some drum loops that, that were played, but they were played like, like also on the keyboard. And uh, overall, it, it captured that feeling of the, uh, the feeling I was going for anyway. It's nice to know that when you sit down to do something, you can actually do it. And it was a simple tune. It, the whole idea wasn't to uh, complicate it, you know, to, to layer it up with instruments just because you can. It just was, uh, you know, not meant to impress anybody. And something has happened to me on that trip where I just, I just like started cranking out tracks. I don't care anymore about... Uh, Nothing is precious. I have no respecter of tracks of anything that has to do with music. In other words, it's all just open to be done. It's just, a, you know, you're just in the moment, and, and you, you, you know, what you want to do is just capture the moment. You want to be there. You want to be there. You want to be there. And then, you know, you're there, and you're in it, and it, just, it happens, and whatever it is, fine. I just can't stand people who judge. 
you know, like this is, I mean, you, you know, I, I can make a judgment about, well, I don't like pop music um, as a general rule. Okay, well, fine. That's not what I mean. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, the, the, I, I, nothing precious, you know, that but you go in and you knock it out however you do it, it's fine. You master it, mix it, do whatever you're going to do the way you do it, it's fine. Forget about everybody else. Forget about what Mix Magazine or Sound on Sound or any of these. I just threw all those out the window. It's just no way. I go to my studio. I'm in my studio now. I'm actually in my mobile studio right now. Um, and uh, I'm talking to you through a professional mind code. And that's what I was talking about in the beginning. It got a little scratch on it, but it's called a de facto two by DPA. And I really like it. And I don't care what anyone else thinks. And I really like the way that I make tracks. And I don't care how other people do it. Some people are in bands. They want to do a band track. Well, that's fine. I'm, in my, I'm a composer. I do my composing track. I use everything under the sun sonically. I use samples. I lo use loops. I use real instruments. I use drums. I use electronic drums. I use uh, little keyboards, big keyboards, um, guitars, bass. You name it, uh, I, I, I go out and capture sound with a recorder. I don't care. I'll put, a, I'll put a filter on that and make it into a drum beat. I don't care. I love the electronic medium. All of it is legit. My real instrument that I play is a mixing board. That's what I play. I play the mix. The mix is my instrument. Everything is legitimate. Any sound, I don't care who did it, what performance, if it's a loop, if it's a sample, it doesn't matter. It's all good. You know, it takes a lot of talent to arrange a, a, a samples into a coherent track. It takes a lot of talent to make it your own. It's all about making it your own. I don't care how you do it. The people that complain about people using electronic music and they say it's cheating, they can all go F themselves right now because I don't want to ever have anything to do with any discussion with these airheads ever again. So I just had to say that. We've had that, yeah, I mean, when I was, we were back at uh, Sweetwater Sound, and, you know, you had this discussion going on all over the place, and it was like, it's all legit, man. One guy comes in, oh, and you know the other thing I really like? And I'll just tell you right now, I really like analog gear, too. But here's what I experienced at Sweetwater. Thank God I missed this guy, because I probably would, now I'd probably elbow him or something. But, you know, he was saying, uh, hey, oh, it's uh, outboard gear is, you know, analog gear is obsolete and all you need is the computer to do everything in the box, blah, blah, blah. And he was like going around telling people that when, when the whole festival was there to show out professional outboard gear, people have an option. You, you know, I like the sound of that. Do I need it? To get, can, I, can I get there in a Toyota? Yes. Can I get there in a Ferrari? Yes. I'm taking the Ferrari. Okay? It's just, it, that's really what it comes down to. Is if you know if you, if people are mad that it costs so much money to buy an analog compressor or something, well they don't have to buy it. They don't need it to make music. You can buy Reason and uh, for your laptop. They give you all the instruments, everything you need, even a keyboard off your laptop. You just plug your headphones into your laptop, and away you go. You're making tracks. You've spent nothing, three three hundred bucks for the program, and you're you're doing it. And if you have any talent, you can do it as well as anyone else. Uh, but I will go into my studio and use something else. I'm sorry. I, I, I use, you know, whatever. Anything is legit. Any program, any DAW, um, any plug-in, any outboard, anything. It's all, it's all just whoever, you know, whatever you're doing. I'm just, I'm just here to go at it in the spirit, you know, and just nothing precious. So when I go in my studio with all this gear, you know, you know, I don't even know what it's up to now. Maybe a couple hundred grand worth of stuff. Who cares? Nothing's precious. Nothing matters. You know what I mean? I'm going to go in there and do a low ball. I'm going to go down and do low tech and lo fi. Make it sound sloppy on purpose because I need to right then. And I'm, I sound a little bit fervent right now because it, this whole thing has really damaged me. You know, I feel. You know, I'm very sensitive, and so I've had to withdraw from social media and everything else. And, and because why? Because it really hurts my feelings when when people are stupid. I, I when people are dumb, I really can't handle it. You know, and it's like I I know of a band that's going to be doing some tracking this afternoon, 
with just as a band, and that's great. If I had a gig uh, tracking a band, I have my mobile rig. I have the ability to uh, bring my mic preamps, and I can uh, they can be going direct right into my into the Pro Tools session and be tracked, and uh, they will sound insane. It'll be great. Is that but is that necessary for everybody? No. Is Beethoven legitimate because he worked on on his own? It's fine. Is it great having a big orchestra? Yeah. How about if it's all electronic? Fine. How about if you just make music by farting? Uh, make a drum beat out of it. And don't think it, you know, I just, I just can't believe that I've wasted time with people's dumb, inane, pedantic, foolish opinions. So here's my philosophy of music. He, it's, it's, it's just a flow. It's just, I do it because it's like breathing. It's like air. I do these podcasts because it's like air. air. This and music are no different. They're the same thing. It's shoo, in the spirit. I, I do it as a service to humanity, and, but to myself. I don't care if they buy it or not. I don't care what. I don't care anything about any of that. I realized after I, I did that CD, Sword and Dove, that there's no market for that kind of thing. We were working on the DCP stuff, I realized there's no market, so there's no need to complete a CD. There's no need. I, I, I gave that up. The CD is obsolete. Um, the, the, uh, the digital downloads are obsolete. You know, the future is streaming. Okay, fine, so we'll stream. Um, these artists have to go out and be on concert tour till they're 80 years old because they can't make money in the record store? Fine. I don't care what they do. Uh, podcasting, you know, I could be much more organized, have a radio station, we could have a radio live broadcast every day, but I do it this way because I'm, you know, I'm free. I mean, this is, I'm free of that. <laughs> strike while the, uh, I got some nice letters, um, no, I'm sorry I went on, I'm sorry I wasted your time with that, I got some nice letters, um, and so, you know, the podcast do reach people, and, I, and, and they, 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 Frankie, they do reach people on WWCR, so I got some nice letters about that, I still haven't figured out how to make this rig stream, I think I've got a like a, a micro rig that I had with me, like it's a, I've got like three studios here. <laughs> it's, it's amazing, but it's it's a little interface that by RME that um, enables me to loop the 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 uh, to be able to make it stream out on Skype. You've got to loop it back into the mixer. It's almost like creating a feedback loop. But then that all that's the only way it can actually be broadcast out. Or you need a mixer to be able to do that and then try to control it. Um, eh, I don't know. See, for me, the podcast is king. Anyway, it's all just a thing in time. Um, but back to what we were talking about. You know, the, the thing that's going on that people are really buzzing about is you know, this collapse of the world, this collapse of humanity into, um, and, and the, the elimination of humanity and the advent of machines. This is nothing new. This is, this is, been discussed and gone over, you know, it's, it's been an, a theme for hundreds of thousands of years, if not millions and billions and forever. Um, there seems to be some kind of conflict with this idea of the creation of matter, you know, and, and part of that being man. And there's a war against that, but without the war we have no equilibrium. The equilibrium is what keeps this boat going, but they keep trying to destroy. They don't just want to destroy humanity. Let me correct the record on that. They want to destroy everything. Now, the Bible is aware of these people using high-tech to destroy stuff. And, you know, high-tech was used as Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, it was basically a nuke, right? It was some kind of nuclear something. No, it wasn't about gays. Again, I, what can I do? I'm sitting here surrounded by stupid people. 
I, you know, when I say stupid people, I don't mean my friends and people, associates I talk to. So I'm talking about, you know, news agencies and, you know, advertising and the television, you know, Fox and Friends. I saw some of that this morning. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. How, I look at the one guy, Brian Killamead, I think he's a pretty smart guy, but sitting there on that couch, well, I, I guess they're making money, making a living, and, you know, it's good to, to nurse you, you know, to nurse feed you while you're refusing to look at reality. So they're going to nurse feed you into oblivion. So I wish that all the blacks and, and, and uh, the, the whites and all the races and the gays and every other issue and the president and everyone else would wake up! I, you know, just some common sense, you know, a little modicum of reality, a little bit of admitting what, what this is, you know. I have, you know what, I may create a grant to, uh, if anyone creates a show or anything that actually talks about the truth, um, you know, in depth, I mean, the whole thing, not just part of it, but the whole damn thing. I know, I know. It's hard to talk about because it gets down to a, an actual singularity, which is the single imagining. And it's hard for me to explain that. You'll have to go back earlier in the, in the tape and, you know, roll the tape back and, and listen to it there. But, um, you know, people used to, to uh, you know, sit in philosophy class and get, you know, and, you know, speculate that what if we're just, a, a, you know, taking part in someone else's dream? And that was a very, you know what? I remember those discussions. I love that discussion. There's something to that that's just really, really, really to be explored. Um, you know, uh, this idea of, 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 of this being real is, um, you know, and that, that outside the form of matter, this is what they think, this is why they want to eliminate matter, okay? Matter meaning all life everywhere and all planets and everything that is a thing. Because the reverse of it is real life. The inverse of it, I should say, is real life. The, the, the opposite of the matter, antimatter, is where the real life is in their mind. You know. That's, it's not death at all, but it's life. Where matter is death, the opposite is life. And they want life. So they're doing, they believe, and I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt for a little intelligence here, they believe that they're actually... Um, would be liberated by getting outside matter, and that it's true. They wouldn't be subject to, when you go outside of this in the spirit, you're not subject to the laws of nature, of the cyclical uh, laws of nature, which are unacceptable, right? Death, pain, suffering, that's unacceptable, right? So you'd have to get rid of matter to get rid of that problem. So I'm going to give you guys the benefit of the doubt. I mean, that I understand. It's just when you go all the way to the end game and, and the result of playing God, okay? It always winds up being folly and, and, you know, we would all be better off just getting right with our Creator, wouldn't we? Uh, but the Creator's the problem, Z. <laughs> well, maybe you're not looking at it right. Oh, well, herein lies the, the question. You, you know, I'm stupid or I'm a genius. You're stupid or you're a genius. But the, the, the thing between us isn't stupid versus genius. It's incompatible communication. So let me amend what I said earlier about, I, I tend to, maybe I'm flawed, you know, I got a lot of flaws. And boy, I'll tell you, one of them is just uh, getting frustrated with, uh, I was never a good teacher with other people. I was never patient. You know what I mean? Um, I, 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 I'm quick to, to pull the trigger on calling people stupid and stuff, and I'm sorry. What I really mean is the inability of, of, to communicate with my fellow man because of their idea, the, 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 uh, the inability of communicating with people that will go with me on at least part of the way, or, or be able to have a back and forth discussion about these things. When I've had those discussions in the past, and it's always a draw, by the way, 
once you get to a certain realm of reasoning, there is no right and wrong. There is no yes or no, you know, this is evil, that's good. It gets to a point where your ideas are great and valid, and so are mine, even if they don't necessarily line up. It gets to a point where it's okay. And I love going to that point. I love having, and I suppose I'm kind of a junkie for ideas, junkie for conversation, junkie for any of that stuff. And, um, you know, and I'll, and I'll talk people's ear off. I'm talking your ear off right now with it. I can't get enough. I really want to get to the bottom of it all. Not the conspiracy, but the bottom of, of reality, the, of, of it all. You know, and, and that, um, you know, that's my nature to do that. It doesn't matter if I ever get there or not. It's my nature to quest for it. And it I just makes me feel alive. It makes me feel good. I love talking to people for hours and hours and getting to no conclusion whatsoever, but hearing everyone. I love when people imagine things that eventually become thing, things they've imagined are shown to be real. And I love thinking about how that, pro, how that works. And I think we, we've, we've, we've cut short humanity a little bit that we have a lot of unbelievable talents and skills that have been quashed you know, in terms of imagining things, inventions, ways of spinning the reality around. Instead, what I see and what's so frustrating is a whole world of victims, you know, um, and it's Satan's fault, for sure, and, and, and the hierarchy of people that, 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 that exist up on the pyramid to the extent that they can push other people and peoples and civilizations down, and they boost themselves by hurting and killing and destroying others. And so who could be happy with that? Certainly not the people that are boosted, because they're the next ones to be quashed. It's just a struggle and a groan of humanity and a, and a, and a, and a kind of a, um, a sorrow of humanity and a crying in pain. Help us, help us, help us. We're a sinking ship, we're a sea of fools. Help us, help us, help us. Lord, help us, please. And then by the time you get some understanding of what it is, your time's over. Before you can implement any changes, before you could affect the way people think, before you could actually help others with what you now know, your time's up. So with all that, I got to throw my hands up in the air. I said, Lord, you know, we all get what we don't want. You know, I didn't want to be in a place where um, I would spend three hours talking to someone who was nodding his head up and down and then have him go away and tell other people I was crazy. You know, that kind of thing really hurt my feelings over the years. You know, fake, fake listening. I guess that's why I'm podcasting. <laughs> well, with that, I pray you are all in good stead. This is Zef Daniel. Zedja. I don't know if I'm, I'm still going and, um, boy, this is going to take forever to get this out of here. And I wish you all the best. Blessings in the name of Jesus. See you later.